Hi, this is Sammy from Ains I Have Sounds, and welcome to this video about how to design a pad in Spire. It's going to be a fairly basic pad at first, and we'll add a little bit of complexity, but I think the point is to show you your way around Spire and around designing a pad sound generally. First, I'd like you to know I've created a patch in a separate instance of Spire to play the bass notes. This is just a basic super saw with a low pass filter and a bit of distortion. I like to keep the bass notes um, from the pad separate so that I can be free to design the pad sound without worrying about low end muddiness. So now let's listen to the pad and recreate something very similar from scratch. great. I'm just going to glue some of these bass notes together. I'm going to load up a new instance of Spire, copy down the MIDI part, and click on the uh, init button on Spire to create an init patch. So we can start from scratch. <laughs> great, there's our init patch. So the first thing I need to do is make sure Spire has enough voices enabled to play the whole pad. So we'll start by getting the basic shape of our sound using Amplitude Envelope. In Spire, Envelope 1 is the Amplitude Envelope, so whatever we set here will determine the timing of the sound. So I'm going to set a long attack uh, so the amplitude slowly rises, and a long release so it slowly fades away. Now up here you have a graphical representation of the envelope. This doesn't actually change when you move the controls, but what it's there for is a, it's a control to allow you to change the shape of each individual stage, so from exponential to linear. Um, so you're going to see that in a moment. Great, so I'm going to add some decay. What, that, what that's going to do is uh, define the height of the sound, and then I'm going to bring the sustain down. And the sustain is the level or the amplitude of the sound uh, as you hold the notes down after the attack and decay stages. So I'm setting it to sort of gently slope down to a lower volume. However, I'm finding that now the uh, drop is a bit too drastic, so I'm going to change the shape here so that the drop is a little more gradual and feels maybe just a little more natural and you don't notice the drop in volume quite as much. Great. Now I want to modulate the pitch of oscillator 1 and 2 using the LFO. This is LFO 1 and there are two slots on this panel where you can set the destination. If I needed more destinations I could always assign them in the mod matrix by selecting LFO as a source and then assigning them to whatever destination I wanted. So right here is where we can determine the shape and speed of the LFO. I'm going to dial in a small amount for both oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. And we can control the overall effect of this with the amplitude control, which is built onto the envelope panel itself. So let's listen to how this sounds.
Right, so you can hear that's taking effect. Uh, it's slightly modulating the pitch and it's giving the sound more movement. And you'll hear it even more as I dial in oscillator 2's level now. So the sound is still mono at this point. I'm going to pan the uh, oscillator 1 and 2 separately. I'm going to pan oscillator 1 to the left, not all the way, but most of the way. And the same with oscillator 2 to the right. Now I'm going to dial in oscillator 3 to the super soar or hyper soar setting, which is a bunch of oscillators stacked on top of each other. And uh, we can control the style and uh, the density and the amount of detune here. Um, we can tweak this till we get the desired lush sound that we want. We also have a wideness control. This will pan the oscillators out in the stereo field. But for now, I'm going to leave it in mono. I am going to widen it as we listen, and ultimately with most pads you want it to be wide. Great, so now I've got a really good basic pad sound. I'm just going to tweak the envelope settings to really get the exact sound that I'm going for. Excellent. So now I want to add in some white noise. I'm going to bring in oscillator 4. I'm going to select the uh, noise option in the waveforms. This is actually a filter right in the middle here that you see. And if you disable the key button, you can access the filter. So you can control the cutoff and the resonance, which I'm going to bring down. So now I have white noise, which is uh, the bottom end is filtered out. So we don't get a lot of rumble. Excellent. If I wanted to control the volume of that noise, I could use an envelope and uh, just select um, the volume of oscillator 4, which is actually it's in the oscillator mixer right there. And uh, I could modulate the volume to rise and fall separately from the rest of the pad sound. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. What I want to do is actually engage the filter right now. Let's have a listen. As you can hear, there's some modulation on the filter already, and that's because envelope 3, by default, is routed to um, modulate the cutoff of filter 1. So I'm just going to disable that. I'm also going to take off the filter link and enable parallel, because I want two filters running side by side, not one into the other, but both separate. Because by default, the filters are set up to run in serial, so filter 1 feeds filter 2. If 
but in a parallel setting, they both have their own individual uh, signal paths, and you can choose what you feed each one. So I've selected uh, bandpass for filter 2. Now I'm going to go to the oscillator section because you'll notice the filter input set to 1, which means all the sound is going into filter 1 from each of these oscillators. I'm going to change that setting now. I'm going to put it in the middle so that the sound goes into both filters in equal amounts, apart from oscillator 4, which will go into filter 2 only. Okay, so that sounds really good. I want to modulate the cutoff of uh, filter 2. I'm going to do that with LFO2. And I'm just going to tweak it until I get the exact kind of effect I'm looking for. Okay, so after some experimentation, this is a sound I'm happy with. I've got the modulation going on with uh, cutoff 2. And actually there's some fade in on the LFO. And the fade in just means that it won't actually start to take effect for, I don't know, whatever the duration of the fade in is. So I'm just making the power come back into the sound a little bit now by bringing the volume up of cutoff 1. So it's a little more powerful than cutoff 2. And uh, cutoff 1 is where a lot of our deeper frequencies are. Now in the mod section, I'm going to assign the mod wheel to control the cutoff. So that as I raise the mod wheel now, filter 1 is going to open up. also going to make it so that as I raise the mod wheel, filter 1 becomes more prominent and filter 2 fades out just a little bit. So in Spire we actually have other waveforms available as well. Let's go to this waveform selection here. And you choose Robo 1 and Robo 2. And you dial in the mix amount here. And I'll bring that up and you'll hear what these two sound like. modulate this mix amount for each oscillator. I'm going to use LFO3 and I'm going to dial it in differently for each oscillator. Basically I want the wavetable to fade in on one while it fades out on two and the other way around so that you can hear a sort of tremolo effect happening because remember they're panned.
to set up the EQ, I'm going to turn up the mid-range and narrow the Q because I, I want to create a resonant peak, which I'm going to modulate. So I'm going to sign the mod wheel again. I'm going to go into this empty slot here, and I'm going to choose to modulate the mid-band frequency. resonant peak as I move the mod wheel up and down. Now add some effects. First is the phaser. I don't always use a phaser. Sometimes I do. Most of the time I don't, but it's quite common to use a phaser, and it does sound pretty good. Inspire in particular. So I'm just looking for a setting that generally sounds right to me. I don't like to mix it in too strong. Now the X comp just helps the sound to fatten up a little bit. Um, just selecting pre because the pre enables the phaser effect to happen before the reverb section. In the reverb, I'm just going to add in something kind of basic. I uh, don't want to mix it up too high, but I want to really hear the reverb. I do normally use an external reverb, like ether, but um, the one Inspire is very good too. Great, let's listen to the one we started with. bus.
thank you very much for watching i do hope you enjoyed that let me know your thoughts comment below also subscribe to me on youtube if you want to see future videos and uh, do check out my website there are links in the description nzfsounds.com have a look at my uh, sound banks reviews check out the audio demos i've got very soon and uh, do look me up on facebook and you can subscribe to me on soundcloud so thank you very much again for watching and uh, this has been sammy from nzf sounds take care